these central banks purchasing gold instead of U.S. treasuries. And you guys had a chart here that you recently put out. So walk us through a little bit about this. And is this really, you know, in some ways, a one-way equation that doesn't resolve back the other way? Yeah, so what this is the obvious consequence of this debt-driven world and led by the U.S., which is, of course, bankrupt. They say they can never go bankrupt. When you print unlimited amounts of money and when you increase debt exponentially, you know, you are basically just printing worthless pieces of paper. The U.S. has been so far skillful enough about what, uh, from the time the uh, gold window was closed, of course, But then with uh, with Nixon and and, um, Kissinger, then they introduced this petrodollar that the whole, they told Saudi Arabia that, you know, we will support you with money and and with investments and and we'll send you weapons, et cetera, um, if the whole world buys oil from you in US dollars. So that was very clever, very clever scheme. So we've had a lot of dollars floating around in the world because of that. But that is now reaching saturation and is all now. We have, of course, the de-dollarization, which everybody is talking about. And it's happening. It's just it not can't happen overnight because it's a long process. The world has been dependent on one currency, sadly, a rubbish currency that is way overvalued because of all the printing. But it's kept its value because there have been so many who have been using it and trading in it. But now you see here that you show here, no, the US has basically had a wonderful means of financing their extravagant lifestyle by issuing unlimited treasury bonds. China used it as a way of exporting to the US, giving them credit. Japan has held treasury bonds for a long time. Other countries have also held them, so you know, many, uh, even Russia, uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, etc. But that's come to an end now. Everybody is now as selling their treasury bonds. Nobody wants them. Russia sold them, China is selling down as fast as they can. Japan is reducing slowly. And that's what you're seeing here in the red line. Everybody's selling pressure bonds. So that means that the US cannot finance itself anymore. And so what we're going to see in the next few years that the only buyer of US treasury bonds will be, or the US treasuries, will be the Fed, central bank of the United States, will be the only buyer of the debt that the US government issues. So first country, because they haven't got any money, they borrow. And then since nobody wants to buy that debt or invest in it, and that's what's going to happen in there or happening now, and it's going to happen at an accelerated level, they only have one buyer for the debt, and that's the Fed. And that's what you're showing here with the red line, and all we were showing in the graph we published. So, th- so that that's, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, for those that are just listening, we're looking at a graph of the growth of central bank gold purchases that just from 2013 to 2023 just keeps going up to the right, you know, relatively gradually from, you know, let's call it $50 billion to just under under $400 billion. Yet we see the holdings in US treasuries grow a little bit and then drop and then drop off dramatically starting in 2021. So this just really illustrates sea change in the way that the US government can really finance its debts. You know, this continued war effort, pension plans, all of these different things. It just shows this complete change in the world's holdings. And this is seemingly or a good portion of it seems to be going into gold, right? The problem that these central banks are clever buyers of gold. They never go into the market and buy lots of gold. They always go straight to another central bank, so do deals not you know, on the market. So that, that's being shown. And therefore, because they never want to push the price up. We haven't got to the stage yet when there is demand for gold to the extent that the price really goes up. At the same time as the clever buyers, like the central banks buying gold, investors are selling gold. If you look at funds and ETFs holding gold, I mean, that's gone down by something like 30% since 2020, whilst the gold price initially dipped a bit, but it's gone up dramatically. Purchases of these funds of gold decreased dramatically in spite of the gold price going up. So that means that there is no interest in gold right now. Central banks are clever. They know what they're doing. They're buying funds are so excited by the stock market and about other assets. So they're not buying gold. They are going to change their mind very soon because gold is now been lying around in dollars, uh, you know, just around the 2000 level, a bit above. It's always possible that if we get, I expect uh, a major stock market sell-off coming at some point, probably, may, probably not in, too far away. It's possible that gold initially goes down a little bit, but this time it's not going to continue down because there's no alternative for people. There's no alternative to selling in what 
must they sell their stocks? What are they going to buy? They're not going to buy treasuries because treasuries, as they know, that's, that's just rubbish. So uh, a lot of them, not everybody, is going to buy gold. And so we haven't seen that buying yet. And one gold goes over 2,100. It's going to move very fast, in my view. I'm not worried about the price. I'm talking about price. I'm not really interested in the price. I don't like giving targets in gold because I've said many times, you know, gold will go to levels that you know are unfathomable today. And we, you know, we have no idea, but it doesn't matter. Some people give a price for gold in X year's time or whatever. I did maybe 10, 15 years ago. I stopped doing that a long time ago because you can't give a price in gold. Tell me what you're, you're measuring it in something that's going down to zero. So it's totally useless to measure it in a currency that is worthless. The only reason for doing that is that if you did continue to hold the currency, you know how much money you're losing, but by not holding gold. Gold is just pure and simple wealth preservation. But as I said, it will be wealth enhancement in the coming years. Of course, there is no more gold around. You know, there is about 3,000 plus tons of gold produced every year from the mines. And then there's another 1,000 tons or so and gold being refined from jewelry, etc., and scrap gold. There's no chance of producing more than that, which means that the increased demand that we will see in gold, which will be major, can only be satisfied by a much higher price. So people want to invest a million dollars in gold, and then they will get, in a year's time or two years' time, they'll get half of what they would get today for a million dollars. That's the way it will work. And then, you know, and that's what we're going to see. I'm absolutely convinced. What does this mean for the U.S., which you know holds, according to the official numbers, the most amount of gold out of any country? Are they going to try to revalue or monetize somehow the 8,000 plus tons of gold to help with this fiscal situation in some way? You know, number one, they got to show their cards because people in the gold industry, nobody knows, of course, but we have a gut feel that they haven't got 8,000 tons because there hasn't been a proper physical audit of gold in the U.S. since Eisenhower's days. There's been part audits, but there hasn't been a full audit taking into account also all the derivatives and futures that goes against this gold. So what has been happening in the last few years, you see that flow, is that central banks are lending gold to the bullion banks. Bullion banks are the major banks that are dealing in gold. The central banks lend gold to the bullion bank. Before, the bullion bank would keep it in their vaults, mainly in London or, or in New York. But you know, in recent years, last 20 years or so, you look at China's demand of gold going up very strongly. In the last 20 years or so, that gold now from the bullion banks that they have borrowed from the central bank, and they give the central bank an IOU, and then the the gold bars, which are big 400 ounce bars mainly from central banks, they go to Switzerland to be refined, and they're broken down into one kilo bars, and Switzerland then exports them to China, to uh, India, etc. Big buyers of gold. So now that gold is gone from the West forever. They're not going to send it back. So all the bullion banks now have, they have an IOU to the central bank. And if the central bank says, mm, can you please give me my gold back? There's no chance for these bullion banks to give them the gold back because they don't have the gold. It's been sent to said another country that are never going to send it back. And therefore, there will be major shortages of gold and uh, you know, it's not a balanced market. And then you have on top of that, of course, the futures markets, etc., which is mainly a paper market, not a cash market. There will be major shortages of gold as these paper markets blow up. And those paper markets are not just futures markets, as I said, they're also central banks and bullion banks that deal in these futures or in these paper markets of gold. So that's going to be fascinating. So coming back to your question, I doubt, and many others too, that the US actually has 8,000 tons. What they have, nobody knows. Do they have 4,000 tons or whatever? So if they're going to revalue the gold, you know, the world's not going to believe it, in my view. Certainly not the BRIC side of the world, uh, at least in, in the southern countries that actually buy physical and hold it. I think that uh, whatever the U.S. is trying with its gold, no one's going to believe it. And it will have very little significance for to you know, make any change to their economy or to their deficits or to the collapse of the dollar. 